What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel again. I am Kyle at Limitless Power Sports Service and Repair. What we got going on here, guys? Um, this is, I believe, a 2013 uh, Cub Cadet 500, uh, Cub Cadet Challenger. Um, this one was actually found, the guy found me on YouTube here on my channel, and he actually lives about mm, 30 minutes away, 40 minutes away, something like that and uh, basically asked me if I could take a look at it. He said he's done a lot of things. He's actually talked to me through email, trying to help him out on this. So what he says he has a problem with, now the uh, motor does start up and runs good, but he has a problem with it shifting. So let me show you what's going on over here. You guys see he already had it all apart. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna figure out what his shifting problem is, but he had actually ordered some, some of the new uh, parts for the shift mechanism up here. So we're gonna install those, even though these are fine. If you could see down here, let me go ahead and take this guy off here if I can. If you could see, I may not be able to get down here. There is a dot right there and a dot here and a dot there. Those line up and that will put you in the neutral position. And then you can go ahead and adjust your shift linkage from there on the neutral position on this. But I'm gonna go ahead and replace that um, anyways, I've already done this off camera with uh, shifting it and nothing happened. So he said to replace the wet clutch and the one-way bearing in here. So I'm thinking he got the one-way bearing installed backwards most likely. So we're gonna go ahead and fix the clutches over there and then we're gonna go down here, pull the uh, cover off, check out the primary, make sure it spins the proper direction. And then we're going to uh, check out the one-way bearing pipe to drain his oil and see what's going on with the wet clutch. All right, so let's open this baggie real quick. Um, I'm gonna have a hell of a time showing you guys what's going on down there. I might be able to magnetically mount you somewhere, but this is easy to come out. We just, you're just gonna pull this out. That's a 10 mil bolt. You pull that out and you line the new one up. But let me show you the new one and the dots. I hopefully the dots are on the new one. Sometimes they don't come with the new, on the new ones. I see what the top dot there and Hopefully it's got two dots on the bottom and it does. So basically, if you can see, it has, let me figure out what way to turn this, get some focus here. So you can see it's got a dot here, a dot there, and then this gear also will have a dot. Those dots will line up and that will be in a neutral position. I've seen these been one tooth off and it doesn't shift right. I've seen them get wallered out up here. The uh, shift linkage up here get a little messed up because it doesn't stay tight. I've seen those fall off. Uh, I've seen quite a few things. So like I said, it's a pretty simple deal. You can see how it goes together when it shifts. It just goes like this, rolls back and forth. A pretty simple setup. So I'm gonna grab a 10 millimeter. We'll pop this guy out. We got a new bolt and washer to go on top of it also with this little kit he brought. So hopefully this will be a pretty easy job. And then uh, his uh, dad, I think is the one who bought it, can have it for getting around the farm and deer hunting or whatever else he does. So there's the washer, there's the bolt, and then the, uh, the shift linkage or the gears. I have to look up the exact name of this thing. I forget what it's called. I'll tell you guys here shortly uh, on the next segment of this video. All right, um, I could not find the name of the, name of those, the, the linkage, the gears for the shifter right here. I was looking at it, but we'll go ahead and uh, take this guy out here first. Since I said, like you said, he wants to replace those. There, I, mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with these at all. He just wants to replace them because he thinks that part, it was part of the problem since we have them. We're gonna go ahead and replace them. So again, we'll just get that one off. Line up this guy down here. Which can sometimes be a little pain in the butt. go new bolt that way it holds it in place for me here put it back in neutral get it nice and tight Back to neutral again. Oh, come back. I decided to throw you guys down inside the uh, the motor there. Anyways, and then we'll line this bad boy up. Right there. You guys can see that's 
right in the center. The two dots will dot there, there, and there are lined up. We'll grab the case cover. Clean it out real quick because it's pretty nasty looking. I think I'm going to probably just put a touch of grease on that teeth just to make sure it stays nice and lubricated just in case we do have any uh, any issues. So I'm going to grab some grease real quick. Some waterproof grease. So I honestly don't remember if that really gets oil up in there or not. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw some grease on the teeth. A little grease would never hurt anything anyways. We'll double check all that as we go in with it here. I want to make sure I'm right on the length of that bolt for one. This should be a shorty. Yep. I hate this electric ratchet. Sometimes I cannot get the sockets off. Anyways. These only go to 10 Newton meters, 10 to 12 Newton meters that is. here we'll slap it on the ground check our shift linkage make sure we're in neutral and we're at the right length yep it goes right on there no problem So, let's see what we got going on here now. So that's all buttoned up. So we can see right now, let's see if the gear position sensor is working in this thing. Shows neutral, high, now we're in low. Whoop, let me show you up there. High, neutral, if I could rock it a little bit here. Ugh. And then we got reverse. I was going the wrong way. I was pulling towards me. I was wondering what was going on. So we know all the gears work. Parking brake works. So uh, I'll fire this thing up for you guys real quick. Let you guys see what I'm talking about. Why I think it's pretty sure it's the uh, one-way bearing on this thing or the clutches in general. So let's see if we can fire this thing up real quick. All right. So got her fire right up. You can hear it. it sounds pretty good. Air's low, there's high. Let me step in here a little bit. Just and then we can give it gas. The machine does not want to go anywhere. Throw it back into neutral. We'll shut it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off the uh, CVT cover. That's a bunch of 
10 millimeter heads there all the way around it. Pull, pull that guy off and we'll take a look at the clutches. All right, guys, I got that CVT cover off here. Uh, again, you need to take that little bolt out here. You might have to move this around or if you can push it up underneath there so the cover comes out. It's a pain in the butt or just pull it out far enough to where you can turn the cover and pull it up. All right, so we can look at the belt deflection here. We can see the belt is definitely, definitely tight. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fire this up and we're gonna see what everything does inside the transmission here. Let me go ahead and uh, get this. Uh, there we go. That way we don't uh, get the coil wrapped up inside there. So let's fire this thing up. So we're setting in neutral now. So we're gonna put it, let's just rev it up and see what happens here. You can see that jerking not want to do anything so there's something going on with this clutch let me shut it back off we're in neutral i can't even i can't turn the clutch so something going on down here with the clutch we'll go ahead and pull this cage off we'll grab a uh six by one oh bolt i forget the length of it pretty long one to go in here i use two of them uh spread the secondary clutch apart and that'll give us the space to pull the belt off. But first, well, let's get this cage off. So it's a 10 millimeter uh, socket here, here, one down here, and one over here. Now pay attention to the length of the bolts because they are different lengths where they come out of on this thing. Uh, so you don't run too long. So remember, set those up the same way you pull them out one at a time. And then once you get the cage off, go ahead and set it up that back in the same holes. That way you know where they came from. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off off camera real quick and then we'll see what the cage, the bearing in the cage looks like. Make sure that's good and then see if we get any play in this clutch once we take this cage off. All right, so I got the bolts out of the, uh, the cage right here, this cradle. Uh, sometimes it does get a little stuck. This one was actually missing uh, one of the bolts. So I'm going to try to try to get it off if I don't keep knocking you guys down. Try this again. Try to get it off with just a little small pry bar. Put a little pressure on it. There we go. She slipped off loose that time. I still feel she, my gosh. Feel it's a little tight on the bottom yet. All the bolts are out of it. You can see, look at that. See how the cage is caught? Look, watch, see that? I don't know if you guys see that or not, but watch this. Okay, we'll get close. So that bearing, that, K, that that primary clutch, the end of that bolt, or the end of the crankshaft is stuck inside that bearing on this cage. So now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get that out and where I'm gonna set you guys at to get a good view here without dropping you guys again. Let's try that, you're from the back. I really don't care for the angle much, but here, I'm gonna come up a little bit. Eh. All right, whoa, about lost you. All right, let's see how that works out. See if you guys don't fall off up there. So, it's gonna take a little, oh, the whole entire primary just <laughs> came apart. Look at this. Holy smokes. Every. Oh, wow. I have no, I have never seen that before. Holy smokes. I wasn't trying to get the cage off. I wasn't trying to pull. Uh, so that's a wet clutch drum here. You guys can see that it spins fine this direction, which it's supposed to spin to the left. But let me go ahead and get this cage out. We'll take a look at this over on the bench in a minute. But let's take a look at what we got going here. So I don't need to spread the secondary, I guess, with the bolt. So we'll just take the belt off right now and we'll do that when we put it back together. You hear it was caught inside there. So there's a washer, which I don't ever remember a washer going in between there. So I think they screwed that up when they put this back together because this washer should go on the end 
out here with the nut, out here with the nut. So that washer just came from the inside. Um, so we'll pull uh, this inner sheave off. I'm trying to do this one handed guys. It's not that easy. So you can see the inner sheave is not horrible. It's got a little wear right here. Not any really any debris or anything on it. He did buy a new secondary clutch for it, but you can see definitely have the, uh, <laughs> it's got the seal pushed in way too far. All that seal's got to do guys is just line up flush on the outside edge here. I am going to leave that alone because it is sealing. I'm not going to pull this apart and knock that and pull that seal out and put a new one in. Uh, we're going to leave that alone. Um, I don't think we're going to have, I don't think it's going to have any issues. I know it's a little sideways. It's a possibility. I just don't want to get in there and try to pry on it and possibly rip it to get it back out or dent it. Cause all you got to do again, this one here just presses up right here. All right guys. So I was talking about, uh, I just had a customer come pick up a four wheeler finished up, but what I was talking about here earlier was not having to replace this, but I guess I'm going to have to, cause if we look close, the, the, uh, the threads on this end of this wet drum shaft, you guys probably can't see that. Let me try to, on the end of this wet drum shaft are just destroyed. So I'm gonna have to end up getting a new wet clutch drum. Um, and then I'll be, I'll have to pull that seal out. So I'll have to get a new seal. Uh, I'll talk to the customer, see what he wants to do, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to replace this. So uh, I'll talk to him about that. And let's go ahead and jump into this, uh, the main part of the clutch and let's see why it happened the way it happened. All right, let's walk over here to the workbench real quick. You guys see the clutch we got set in here. So um, I did get a little more stuff done in here recently. But anyways, uh, let's find out, let's see what I can do. Look at that. You can see how it's, it's all mashed and mangled in there. Let me get, try to get some light down here. So I'm gonna have to try to, I'm gonna throw you guys on the tripod here and see, well actually I might be able to just set you up here since this is all metal. I'll try to point you down. If I don't throw you around, I think a tripod might be better. Uh, just because of the lighting and stuff. But anyways, we'll see what that does. So we're gonna go ahead and try to get this. Oh man, it is, she is mashed in there. I don't know what happened here. I don't know what's going on. The heck is that all about? That's the cover for the bearing. All right, well, let me grab some, try to pop that apart. So we need to get this guy to come out of here. Let me grab a dead blow hammer. We'll try that out. A couple different variations. We'll stick the dead blow hammer here. Like this and give it a few whacks on each side. There we go. Bam. <laughs> Look at that. The nut wore itself right in there and destroyed, destroyed this guy. So we might be able to salvage this. I'll have to check the bearing out. Let me bring some light down here again. The nut is definitely stuck and rounded bad. So this is probably, I could tell, it's probably gonna call for a whole new clutch. We're gonna take it apart. This is all indented here. So he's probably gonna need a whole new primary clutch. I don't ha have any parts sitting around for this. I can't even push down on that. So we'll go ahead and we'll take this off. We'll take this piece off, get it separated. We'll check the bearing and we'll pull the primary clutch apart to see what the problems are on the inside and why it's all cocked sideways. I got a pretty good idea. But again, this is all bent in. So I have to see if he wants to spend the money on actually getting a new clutch or if he wants me to try to salvage this, but this is all oblonged. I recommend just getting a whole new primary clutch. All right, so you're probably gonna hear my kids flying around on their go-kart out there. I bought one of those little Coleman go-karts for them. Uh, pretty cheap, second hand. Uh, you guys can see that, that nut is destroyed. 
Uh, let's try to get it out. I'm gonna throw it in my vise over here real quick. And just try to knock it off. <laughs> it ain't going anywhere. She is on there and in there. Holy smokes, across the shop. Everything is destroyed. All right, anyways, kids are bothering me. They're all wanting to ride stuff, do stuff. We're just trying to get this thing apart here. But I know we're going to have to buy quite a few different new things. I just want to see what happened. This is weird swinging right-handed when I'm left-handed. Oh! It welded itself to it. There we go. Look at this poor thing. It literally welded. It welded itself to it. It was running like that for so long and it's all messed up. So it's probably gonna definitely, I don't know if we're gonna need a new cage or not. I'm gonna pull out. That looks like it was supposed to be the bearing or a seal, I don't know. Let's try to pull it out and see, see what that is. Cause usually I just lube these back up, clean them out and lube them up, but. All right, so that's the oil seal. Bearing still feels good. So the seal looks like crap. So we'll have to order up a new seal. And then this plate here, I don't know. We might be able to straighten that back out and reuse it. Really don't want to, but I don't know if they actually order it, uh, offer it separately. Oh, well, see, this is what I get for ordering a Harbor Freight, or getting a Harbor Freight vice instead of just a good one. I was trying to, just get one quick in a hurry, and then I end up fighting the fight like this. So you can see, got it flattened back out. This tab needs to be bent back over also. So we'll bend that tab just a little bit because that's what's gonna catch it. And the mosquitoes are out of control. So we actually might be able to salvage this piece here. We'll see if they actually offer the seal separate. If not, I'll go up to the uh, a bearing warehouse here in, in town and see if they can't match this up. But. This guy basically sets over this like this, locks in place. And this guy will screw in there. And the end of the crank or end of the wet clutch drum goes inside there. But I'm gonna actually go look at, I got his old wet clutch drum. So like I was saying, you know, he, he uh, Replaced it, but let's talk about the one-way bearing for a second. So here is a wet clutch when it's installed. This lip is facing you and the bearing has writing on it. If you guys can see that or not, you can see some writing on it with the arrow pointed to the right. So when you install that, you put it with the writing facing outwards towards you, which is the driver's side. And then the wet clutch drum will go on like this and it will spin freely counterclockwise, which is to the left, and it's gonna catch to the right, like the whole thing will spin freely, and then it catches. So it'll spin free to the left, catches when it goes to the right, and then this will engage on the motor. So again, you guys can see how wore out that is, but remember, once again, I get asked about this all the time, the numbers and the arrow face you as you're inserting it onto the wet clutch. Again, the wet clutch goes on this direction onto the uh, crankshaft. The bearing goes on with the numbers facing out towards you and the wet clutch drum goes on top of that. 
Remember, numbers face towards you or towards the driver's side. Anyways, so we got that covered again. Let's go ahead and take this uh, primary clutch apart and let's see what's going on with that guy. Let me get this bolt back in here. So let me grab my, I'm gonna grab my uh, screw gun for this one. Uh, I usually do this by hand, but I think we're running into some major problems here. So we're just gonna whip all these out real quick. That one wasn't tight. That one was. And that's my phone. Get that phone call out of the way. We got some plumbers here taking care of some stuff around the house. Anyways, finish taking this apart real quick to see what's up. So there is an update to these clutches, according to Motorcycle Doctor. Um, great place for information if you guys need that too. But, oh, well, that should have just popped right off. But here we go again. All right. Anyway, so basically if you're having problems with your clutch jamming up or whatever, what you do, you'll take this ring off you pull this pressure plate out. Look at, look at all the weights in there. Can you guys see that? All the weights. Oh, I just lost one of the sliders there. Look at the weights. They're just laying all over the place. So uh, definitely was not put back together correctly. You guys see these weights are laid over. Not doing very good there. We'll get these guys back in their proper homes. Uh, that weight's probably not going to work that well anymore because it's been smashed. I'm going to look at all these weights real quick because some of these, they all look like they've been smashed and sliding and not rolling. Well, they do kind of do that too. But, uh, so you can see that's all improper. Those had fallen apart. That's probably why this clutch didn't was, wasn't sliding like it's supposed to, and this wasn't set in there right. But again, on the update, uh, if you're having problems with it sticking, what you do is you clean it all out, all the grease out, and then you put it back together with no grease in it, no O-ring, and no uh, cover like this, and you put it back together just like this with the sliders and rollers in there, and that's supposed to help with it jamming up and things like that. Um, so we're gonna take a look at the sliders look good. This guy's all indented and bent. So we're probably looking at a new, I don't think we're gonna be able to find just this piece. Uh, new primary clutch, new uh, wet drum clutch, or wet drum itself, wet clutch drum. And I might be able to save that seal, I doubt it. But this seal here we'll have to replace also. So I'll get a customer holler, and then we'll see if we can fix this shifty problem after that. 